Thank you very much, uh, dear uh, Chairwoman. Uh, I am always happy to be there in, uh, in Barcelona, and I would like to speak a little bit about biliary tract cancer now. What do we know about, the, very rapidly, uh, the epidemiology of this disease? Uh, the mortality rates uh, are increasing everywhere in the world, so it will probably be more and more a problem to treat these patients in the, in the future. If we look on the standard of care in terms of metastatic uh, patients, we know that uh, chemotherapy is better than best supportive care. This is something interesting, I would say. Uh, and we also have this very, very nice randomized uh, trial published by uh, Juan Valle a little bit more than eight years ago now, showing that the standard of care for this patient is a combination of gemcitabine plus cisplatin. Uh, because it has been proven to be uh, better in terms of overall survival than gemcitabine alone. But if you, uh, to go back to that, if you look on the median overall survival of these patients, clearly even if gemcitabine plus cisplatin is better than gemcitabine, the median of all survival of this patient remains very poor and there is a clear uh, need for improvement in the treatment of these patients. We know that, for instance, in pancreatic cancer, improvements have been made uh, through uh, chemotherapy and especially uh, folfirinox. And I see Thierry Conroy in front of me. So congratulations to Thierry for the, the work on folfirinox in pancreatic cancer. So is it the same now for biliary tract cancer? I would say no. Why? Because we have seen, for instance, uh, during the last ASCO meeting, this presentation of another combination regimen, uh, gemcitabine plus S1 versus uh, gemcitabine cisplatin. And what we observe is that this is something that is, uh, I would say, equivalent in terms of efficacy, but not better, with an overall median overall survival that remains at a little bit more than one year or something like that. If we look now on targeted therapies, targeted therapies have changed uh, the treatment of a lot of different cancers, for instance, lung cancer, other cancer, colon cancer. But in a biliary tract cancer, uh, the randomized trial evaluating either anti-EGFR and, for instance, uh, GEMOX versus GEMOX plus cetuximab, the randomized phase two, phase two that, has, has, that has been done uh, by David Malka, who is working in my institute, was completely negative. And this is exactly the same for the, uh, the non-improvement that has been given by anti-angiogenic agents to give these expensive drugs in combination with chemotherapy does not change anything for the overall survival of these patients with BDI tract cancers. And if we do a meta-analysis, if you take zero plus zero plus zero, at the end, the result is zero, no improvement with targeted therapies. But we are moving forward, and there are some data concerning new target and new drugs targeting these new targets. And for instance, anti-MEC, uh, with this MEC inhibitor, binimetinib, that has shown very, very little efficacy, uh, two objective responses in a non-selected group of 28 patients. And this is also the case for this other anti-MEC, tribimetinib, uh, with one patient with prolonged progression-free survival among 10 patients with completely refractory uh, biliary tract cancer patients. But probably, we are always, and this is exactly the same for this combination of pazopanib and trimetinib, you can see only a few patients are benefiting from this combination of new growth. So probably we are treating a lot of different diseases. We know already in terms of clinics, I would say clinical um, development of this disease, that gallbladder cancer is not exactly, has not exactly the same patterns in terms of progression than biliary tract cancer and then uh, biliary tree cancer and then intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. If we go more deeply into biology now, 
we can see that, the, the, I, I took that in a recent review, we can see, and, and we, we did another one in, uh, in the past uh, uh, in the European Journal of Cancer, we can see that the biological abnormalities that are seen in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma are mainly KRAS mutation, FGFR fusions, and you heard already about the efficacy of anti-HGFR disease a little bit uh, a few hours ago, uh, IDH pathway. Uh, this is for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, and this is not for the other types of biliary tract cancer. In extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, you can see that you see more R2 uh, mutant patients, and again, Keras. And in gallbladder carcinoma, the pathways that are involved are a little bit more EGF4 pathway, R2 amplification, and PI strachinase. So, and if we summarize that on this uh, presentation, this picture, you can see that this is completely different. The abnormalities of biological pathways that are involved in the carcinogenesis of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, and gallbladder carcinoma. So probably the best is to select a population that could be treated with the new agent targeting specifically the target uh, that, that is present in this type of cancer. And I show you now the results of a recent uh, studies that have been published in 2017 in Journal of Clinical Oncology. There, the number of patients was quite small, 61 patients, not too bad for biliary tract cancer, but it was selected patients with um, abnormal FGFR status, and these patients were treated with a pan-FGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor. And when you look on the results of this kind of strategy, I would say that this is completely different with a number of patients with a benefit that seem to, to get benefit from the drugs that is clearly higher than the benefit of the drug when it is given to uh, all commerce, a non-selected population. And this is the case for FGFR, and it will probably also the case for IDH1 uh, uh, mutant patients, because we know that uh, this, uh, this pathway is very important in the metabolisms of the cell, and at this moment, the, there are mutant IDH inhibitors that are tested in clinics. And what is interesting is that it is very, very easy to select patients to give them this kind of drugs because it has been proven by a work that has been done uh, in my institution that the mutant forms of IDH1-2 catalyze the non-reversible accumulation of two uh, hydroxyglutarate. So it means that you just have to take a blood sample to measure very easily the uh, two uh, hydroxyglutarate, and you can say this patient is potentially a very good candidate for this kind of drug. Uh, at the end, probably the best is to put all this problem, all this alteration together, and we add an experience into um, um, pilot molecular screening program that has been done in all types of tumor uh, in my institution. The pilot of this was uh, Professor Jean-Charles Soria. And the idea was to try to treat patients with a personalized medicine and with refractory patients and to see if we were able to observe a better progression-free survival than the previous progression-free survival. We, the idea was to double the progression-free survival in second line when it was compared to first line. And if we focus on this group of patients with cholangiocarcinoma, what we observed, uh, taking 42 patients, um, that there were more than 70% of druggable molecular aberrations, and we were able to treat in this uh, personalized medicine program more than 50% of the patients. Uh, with different, you can see uh, again th this kind of, of mutations that I already uh, discussed uh, and presented to you, and with a lot of different pathways that were involved, and we were able to observe a very, very, very good results. Um, I, I skip that with a median progression-free survival of more than two uh, versus the previous progression-free survival. 
And this has been confirmed, I go back to the, to the previous slide, this has been confirmed by a recent uh, work published by the TCGA. Uh, TCGA was able to take more than um, 500, a uh, little bit less than 500 patients and cholangiocarcinoma from 10 countries, and they were able to define four biological subgroup of patients with a very different prognosis, as you can see on the right part of the slide, and probably these patients have to be treated with very, very different strategies following the specific biological classific class where they, they, they are. And at the end, what I would say, this is an example of a very good response. As you can see, in a refractory patient, to observe this kind of response is something that is, that is very difficult. Another hope could be immunotherapy. Is it useful? Is it effective in the treatment of biliary tract cancer? I would say that for the moment, there are some data, for instance, the pembrolizumab K-28, uh, showing that in very refractory patients, it is possible with this kind of drug to obtain a stabilization, but the level of efficacy is not so good, and there are even some Disappointing results, for instance, this has been published very recently. It is a combination of uh, anti-VEGFR agent, ramucirumab plus uh, pembrolizumab, and at the end, in this refractory non-selected patient, the response rate is 4%, the median progression-free survival is very low, and the median overall survival is low too. Probably because, again, immunotherapy was not given to selected patients, but to all commerce patients, and that is to my opinion, the worst strategy for the development of effective treatment in BDI tract cancer. So again, to my opinion, the true hope is this European project that is led by uh, John Bridgewater in UK, the ABC uh, 10 trial, and David Malka uh, in France. Uh, we are trying at this time to get funding for the development of this project. The idea is to take a lot of patients with BDI tract cancer, and to evaluate the role of tumor molecular profiling for these patients that are randomized, you can see in the center, the, that are randomized if we find alterations that are uh, targetable, they will be randomized between an experimental arm with a selected treatment for a selected uh, target versus a control arm treated with a standard of care chemotherapy. And I would say that this is probably uh, the, the best. To, because I have to speak about strategies, I am moving now from uh, metastatic disease to adjuvant disease. We had very recently in 2017 the results of this uh, adjuvant trial evaluating the role of capecitabine after resection of BDI tract cancer. This is a positive trial showing that there is an advantage to give to these patients capecitabine uh, versus no treatment after surgery. And at the end, there are some trial evaluating now the role of liver transplant in ILAR cholangiocarcinoma. Again, this is not metastatic disease. This is a specific subgroup of patients, and uh, it's following the first results of the Mayo Clinic, and there is a trial evaluating that in US, and there is a trial too in France. So at the end, I would like to conclude this presentation uh, saying that uh, clearly BDI tract cancer remains a very very aggressive tumor. Uh, the standard of care does not change for more than eight years now, and this is in first line combination of gemcitabine and cisplatin. There is no uh, many data e evaluating the role of second line treatment in, in this disease. And what we know about new agents and new targets is that probably the best is to develop the new drugs in very, very selected and specific population. And among these selected population, probably in tripatic cholangiocarcinoma with a fusion uh, FGFR uh, or mutant uh, IDH are probably the best candidates for a new and specific target. And for the other, I would say, the best to my opinion, and I think I insist a lot on that, is to develop a personalized program Personalized medicine, I would say, 
is a complete failure for the treatment, to my opinion, for the treatment of colorectal cancer. It is very difficult, and we heard uh, Philippe Philippe uh, just a minute ago, it's very difficult in pancreatic carcinoma, but clearly it seems to work in cholangiocarcinoma. And among this global uh, development of personalized program, we have to put immunotherapy, because if we give uh, immunotherapy, pembrolizumab, nivolumab, or whatever, uh, to these patients, all commerce, again, we probably will fail, or we will waste a lot of money for the treatment of this patient. In adjuvant setting, capsaicabine and liver transplant has to be developed. Thank you very much.